Hey everyone! Thank you so much for tuning into this series. This is the first video of The Courtship Diary and I'm so excited to share what God has really laid on my heart for this series. So you may be thinking or wondering, what is this series really about? I mean, is she going to be sharing her diary about her courtship or what is this? Well, I can tell you it's not quite like your normal diary. This will include my own personal, you know, thoughts and things that, that I've learned and experienced. Um, but really, it's all going to point back to Jesus and it's going to be a little bit different. Maybe a lot different than you might expect. No, this is not a venting session. I'm not going to sit here and tell you the do's and don'ts or how you can, you know, succeed in a courtship, how you can find a man or a woman and how the person is the one, all that type of stuff. It's really not about that. So let's get that out of our minds. And I'm excited to share with you what God has placed on my heart for this series. I hope you enjoy it. I would love your feedback and I'm excited to get started. So let's get started. So the biggest thing um, and most prevalent question that I've gotten since I've been in a courtship is basically, how did you meet him? How did it happen? You know, how were you when you were single before you knew and, and met your future husband? Like, how was that? And one of the things that I can say is that I've really learned through this courtship is that there's no particular level of contentment that that you just are supposed to reach before boom you know here's your future spouse that's introduced to you it's totally not like that and i think that a lot of times our culture has and even really the christian culture that we've created has has made it seem as though when you become a this equals b so when you become content with where you are that means that God is going to bring your husband or wife. And I have found that that is totally not true. Granted, you know, God wants us to be content, but it's not about, oh, be content with being single and he'll provide a husband or a wife. It's totally not about that. And when we think that we we miss it, we totally miss it, we misconstrue it. And it's like, where on earth? Does it say in the Bible, you know, when, when you're content, God's going to bring your husband or wife? I, I have yet to find that verse. Paul specifically says that being single and being married is a gift. It really is. Each one comes with its own challenges. But it's really not even about that. And contentment, I've realized, we've placed it with, with relationships where it's this it's this big thing and I have have realized that it is a daily decision to wake up no matter if you're single no matter if you're married no matter if you you have all this money and you're successful or if you're in between blessings aka broke or if you're working you're not working you're in school you're not in school you're living here you're living there it doesn't matter where you are it's that daily decision to wake up and choose God and to say Yes to your will, yes to your way. Yes to your will, yes to your way. That decision to die to yourself and your own selfish desires and you pray for your desires to line up with God's desires and that his desires will be yours and that your, your heart will change. That is what being content is about. It's not this one time, oh, I have arrived and I'm content. So now here come the blessings. It's not to say that Oh, like when I'm content, it's all about, you know, relationships and oh my gosh, I'm so content and that's why God brought me my future husband. That's why I have a man. I'm in my Boaz and my Adam because I was content. I'm content. And praise God for bringing him. Thank you, Lord. Bruh, no. I'm just like, no. 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 We have to realize that contentment is not about relationships. It is a daily 
thing that you have to do and work on. It's a daily choice. Like, I just, it's just something I've realized and I'm so thankful that I'm not walking around thinking that the only reason I know Brenton is because I was content and that's it. Now granted, there are plenty of scriptures that you could point out where contentment is addressed in a sense. But if you notice, those scriptures have to do with being content with your portion. Like Paul said, I learned to be okay with having a lot, being full and being hungry, all, all of that. Nothing to do with a man or a woman or having a spouse. So, there you go. And quite frankly, I realize this is a thing I had to say yes to, just like I had to say yes to God, because I could have been like, nah, bro, you good. I just moved to Atlanta. I'm trying to do my own thing. I got my own agenda. You cool and everything. But nah, not right now. I could have done that. But I was like, you know what, Lord? It's something here. I'm going to be obedient. Yeah, that's him. That's him. You're showing me. This is him. And praise the Lord, he has arrived. But I wasn't content because I wanted his arrival. I was content because I wanted to be happy and, and joyful and satisfied with the portion that God has given me. And then I had a job where, you know, it wasn't my ideal career. At one point, I wasn't even working. I just had so much going on. I wasn't living where I wanted to. I was still living at home with my parents. Like it was so much going on. But I was I was like, I'm content, Lord. With this portion you've given me right now, I have to choose every day to be content with it. Not that I want to be content because I want a man. So hopefully that has, you know, cleared that up. Praise the Lord. But that's like one big thing that I've been really praying about and writing about all of that so that's one part of the diary okay moving on that's the big thing that I've realized and another thing is just that I am literally looking into a mirror and it's totally mind-blowing like I see myself and I sometimes I'm like man that's me for real it's it's one of those things like you really it's hard to explain like you you have to experience it where you just see yourself and you're like oh man I shouldn't have said that I can be really mean sometimes or I can be selfish sometimes you know and I'm realizing it's not me it's not about me at all and I know and I believe that God has brought Brendan and I together for not us like totally bigger purpose than us and we both realize that praise God I'm with somebody that's like not all about themselves and what they want and everything definitely a journey and I am learning that whatever season God has me in that I need to make the most of it and we can can blow things up in our head where we choose one thing to focus on and boom just like that it's magnified and I just I praise God that it's one of those things where I have really learned like listen you cannot focus on this or the next step so much that you, you just totally miss it and I believe sometimes we think like okay when I have this relationship I'm going to be complete as a person. When God is like, no, all you need is me and you're complete. Point blank, period. And I know it really breaks God's heart that we're so caught up on, you know, having a relationship and dating somebody and getting married that we won't even commune with him. And I, I realized like, you know, even in my singleness, I really... I didn't feel lonely, praise God. And I think it's because I didn't have time to. I was really focused on what God wanted me to do, you know, taking up new hobbies, all kind of stuff, traveling, whatever it was. But I didn't even realize I was preparing for my husband. Like, that's how crazy it was. Like, you know, I had an inkling, like I'm preparing, you know, 
this is for something else. But I never once was like, I'm preparing for my husband. I'm cooking for my husband. I'm looking cute for my husband. I'm working out for my husband. Like, no, it wasn't like that. I really, like, literally did not realize, like, okay, sooner than later, boop, God's going to bring your future husband in your life, and there you go. You're going to be prepared and ready. Like, you will be a wife, and that's still crazy to think about. Oh, my gosh. Okay, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> but it really isn't about that, and I think... Sometimes we get so caught up in preparing for a man or a woman or whatever else, and we totally miss it. We're not here on earth to prepare for a man or a woman. Marriage, yes, it is a reflection of Christ's relationship with the church, but we totally miss it. And we prepare for, for this earthly thing, and we totally miss the spiritual aspect where it's like, hey, you know, really the only reason you're here is to prepare for Christ's return and to make disciples and serve him. But how are you doing that when all you're doing and focused on is preparing for a husband or a wife? Doesn't really work out pretty well. And I got to a place where I was like, Lord, I don't want to be so caught up in preparing for a husband that I have not prepared for you. And long and behold, I may not even be promised a husband. And you could come back tomorrow and I'm still single. Oh, look at that. Was I preparing for you? Am I even ready for you to come back? Do I look like a beautiful bride like you want your church to look like? Or am I over here still trying to get dressed and not ready? Because I was getting ready for a physical wedding. And I know what dress, where my reception's going to be, what colors, who my bridesmaids are going to be, what food I want, what I'm going to name my children, where I want to go on the honeymoon, what kind of ring I want, what kind of limousine I want to drive. You know who yeah no like we get so caught up in all this stuff that is so temporary that we just totally miss God and I it is my deepest desire to like truly like God I just I need more of you like I do not want to be caught up even in this courtship that I totally miss you in it and God is in it he's in every single place of your life he's never going to leave you he's never going to forsake you and it is up to you to see him right where you're at whether you are single whether you are married whether you're in a courtship dating whether you're working or not like i really don't want to make this whole thing about oh i'm in a relationship yay it's not about that and that's what i want people to realize is that this is truly about preparing for christ's return God brings two people together to help aid in that, aid other people in that. It is a ministry in and of itself. And I just, I want to to realize that more and to die to myself even more to realize like this is so not about me. It is so not about, you know, oh, my relationship with Brendan and how awesome it is and how great, like I'm so excited to be married. Like honestly, I, Jesus could come back before we get married. <laughs> and that's what I'm realizing. I'm like, Lord, I can't sit here and focus on something that I'm not even certain of. Like, I don't know. I don't want you to do that either because there's so much that God wants you to do. There's so much he has in store and whatever season you're in, whatever divine appointment he has set up just for you, don't miss it because you're focused on something temporary because as much as we hate to admit it marriage is temporary relationships are temporary being single is even all of this this life we live is temporary we are preparing for eternity and we have to get to a place to where we realize that like all of it this this world is just temporary and and god is like literally trying to bang that in our heads like like stop it stop it stop it stop it you're so focused on something that is not going to last forever that you forget to prepare for what will last forever. And I'm realizing that in this courtship, like God is showing me like, India, I need you to prepare for me. Do not sit here and just prepare for this man. And, and this won't even last forever. Prepare for me. Prepare for me even in this courtship. And and I'm that's what it's all about. I'm realizing like, God, this is, this is all about you. It's all about God and his love and... God is so amazing and he gives us chance after chance after chance and, and we just so many times we miss it 
yet he still gives us another chance. And I'm so grateful for that, that God has me in this place to even sit here in front of this camera and tell you that. Because some of you are watching this video right now and you are caught up. You have been caught up in wanting and desiring the relationship, the man, the woman, the marriage, the children, the wedding, whatever it is, that you have failed to prepare for the ultimate wedding, the ultimate ceremony. And that is when we are finally reunited. Well, you know, I'm not going to say reunited because we haven't united with him yet. We've, re we've united with him in a sense, in the spiritual sense on earth. But to be united with Christ for eternity, for forever. I can't even fathom forever, and neither can you. But to really think about that is, is mind-blowing. Are you preparing for eternity? Are you really getting ready for, for the best wedding ever? Or are you so caught up in what you don't have that you can't just truly appreciate the portion that God has given you and use what he's given you to the best of your ability. He has so many gifts and talents and, and things that he's instilled in you and only you. You are the only you on this entire earth. And nobody is like you. Nobody looks like you. Nobody can talk like you. Nobody can relay the message like you. Are you so caught up in, in one thing that you totally miss the experience of God and truly experiencing his love and mercy and, and his presence and just walking and living out his word in this earth. I, I can't imagine because for a while I was missing it. I totally was missing it. So I want to challenge you to truly hold tight to God and his promises and his word and to just dig deeper, dig deeper. Stop comparing your portion to whoever's portion you see on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or even in real life. Be content and choose contentment every single day. Every single day. That's what you have to do, just like we have to choose to die to ourselves every day. That is what it's all about. I'm so excited about the rest of this series. The next video is actually going to be called The Gospel Revealed in Courtship. And Brendan will be joining me. So I'm really excited about that because this is like his first video with me. I'm my first time doing a video with him. So that's going to be exciting. I'm really you know, ready to share that. I'm just really blessed. I'm blessed to even be able to share this with you. I pray that you have received it well. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to email me at mylifeisindia at gmail.com or leave a comment below. So... Look forward to the next part two of this series. Again, I'm not exactly sure how many videos God will lead me to do. We'll see. But the Courtship Diary is truly all about Jesus and pointing back to him. And I'm sharing what I'm learning and realizing even in the process of my courtship. So I look forward to it. I hope you do too. It's been a pleasure sharing with you. And I'm excited for next time.